Okay guys, in this tutorial series we're going to be making a wave shooter just like this one. It has scoring, has blood, a um, lot of enemies spawn in, and you shoot them. It's very simple, but it will help you nail down the basic concepts of Goda, and it's very expandable. It's actually reusing lots of code from Carl's Crude Combat, which is my game jam game. You can check out the link in the description. Let's get into it. We're going to quit the project list. I'm going to be making a new project. We're going to be calling it um, Wave Shooter Tutorial. Set it to your down your project's location, create a folder, and we're going to be creating it. So there's going to be a little bit of project setup. So go to 2D, go to Project Settings, go down to Window, set the width to 640. And the height to 360. This will be the width and the height of our actual game viewport or like game window. And the test width, the 1280, and the test height, the 720. So that will be the actual window on Windows, how high, like the size of that. Scroll down, set stretch mode to 2D, and aspect to keep. Stretch mode will basically scale all the sprites in the game to the scale of the window, and aspect will make sure it keeps the same aspect ratio when resized. Never mind, go back to project settings, I close that. Um, you're gonna wanna be going to environment, set it to deep, darker color or color of your choice, doesn't matter. And we're gonna be importing our tutorial assets from the Google Drive. So I'm gonna navigate to that folder and I'm gonna drag them in. So we have a circle and a square. We're gonna add a sprite. This is going to be our player, so you can rename it player, and we're going to be setting this texture to the square texture. I'm going to set the transform to 1.5 by 1.5, so it's a little bit bigger on the screen, and we're going to be setting the modulate to a blue color, kind of like this. Okay, so now we have our player set up, we need to set up our player movement input. So go back to project settings, input map, and we're going to add a new action, move right, we're going to be setting it to D move left move up and move down move left is going to be a move up is going to be w and you guessed it move down is s wazd okay so now we're going to be now we have our input set up we can create a player script we're going to create that and i'm going to be setting up some variables variable speed equals 150 and variable velocity i'm just going to set it to standard vector 2 then we're going to be making our function process which basically happens every frame and what's going to happen here is we're going to be saying velocity.x equals int input is action pressed move right minus int I'm gonna maximize this window. Inputs is action pressed, move left. So, some clarification of what this line in the code does. It basically sets the x value of this vector, which is the first value, to the integer version of input dot is action pressed, move right. Basically just converts that to an integer. It's usually a Boolean, so it's true or false. When you're pressing the key, it's true. When you're releasing, it's false. Converts that to int, so it's zero when it's false, and pressing it is one. You're subtracting that from move left. So what this does is, if we're pressing the D key, which is move right, it's gonna be one. If we're pressing A key, it's gonna be negative one. And if we're pressing both of the keys, it's going to cancel out to zero. That's why I like this movement method. It cancels out the inputs if two inputs are pressed at the same time. Velocity.y equals input is action pressed. We're going to be doing move down minus integer input is action pressed and move up. So same thing as above, just using the move up and down inputs. Then we're going to add our global position. So this is actually going to move our player. Plus equals velocity. Well, we're going to do speed times velocity multiplied by delta. 
So what basically Delta does is it makes sure that how much frames are being processed in your game, everything's going to move at the same speed. So that's why we multiply by Delta. Okay, so I'm be saving this, save as player.tsen, and we can run it. So we have a player, he moves around, and everything works well. But you're going to see when we move in the diagonal, he moves twice as fast. This happens because velocity.x and y equals 1, 1, which adds up to 2, so you're going twice your speed. To fix this, there's a function in Godot called normalize. So velocity equals velocity.normalized. And what this basically does is this makes sure that um, when we press the diagonal, it's going to set to 0 0.5 instead of going the higher value of 2. So it's going to give us the same speed as we were going to the right direction or any direction. So you can see now that he's moving the same speed in every direction. So that basically concludes our player movement tutorial. I'm going to be making a lot more of these tutorials soon, so you can keep an eye out for that. I hope you guys liked it, and I'll see you guys in the next one.